Hello guys, welcome to the Nourish 2020 Cafe. Today we're going to be doing a buffet item. We're doing something that's traditionally English. We're doing a Yorkshire pudding with roast beef and horseradish sauce. We're going to do a nice little one. And I've actually got an example here. We've got little roast, uh, little Yorkshire puddings. And we're going to put a nice piece of rare roast beef on top. Nice dollop of horseradish sauce. This is going to look great on a buffet. Okay, let's have a look at the ingredients. So your Yorkshire puddings, as you can see, are like a small raised pancake. So we need to make a batter for that. And for that we've got flour. We're using self-raising flour. Eggs. We're going to add some milk to it because it gives it a nice flavour. We're going to season it with some salt and pepper. And I'm going to add some herbs to it just to give it something a little extra. Here we've got the beef. This is the end of a fillet of beef. We're going to cook this rare. The nice thing about this, as it's thicker at this end, this end will be nice and rare, whereas this piece won't be. It'll be quite well done. And that means that your customers have got a range to choose from, because some people will want it rare, some people won't. The horseradish sauce today, for convenience, I've bought a jar of it. I'm going to add some salt and pepper, some parsley that I'm going to chop. And I'm actually going to thin it out slightly, lighten it up slightly. And I'm going to use double cream for that and we're going to lightly whisk that. Okay. Okay guys, here we are, we're making our Yorkshire pudding batter. The important thing with this is to make it in advance. It needs to sit in the fridge 24 hours if you can do it. Let's get on and make it. We've got 115 grams of self-raising flour. That's been sieved to get any lumps out. It's going into a clean bowl. I've got three eggs here that have been beaten. What I need you to do, make a little well in the middle, add the eggs and start stirring. You can see my hands just resting there so it's holding the bowl still. So you're making a paste, a thick paste in the middle. Just keep whisking. That's all the egg in. And then just occasionally shake the bowl. You can see this hand shaking the bowl. It means more flour falls into the middle. And then you keep making a paste. Although you can beat any lumps out if you don't make them in the first place, life's slightly easier. Okay, we've got a lovely thick paste there. Nearly lump free. Then we're going in with the milk. And now it's really easy to combine this because you're adding a liquid to a thick paste. It combines really easily. As you can see. Keep in mind with this guys, we're making this the day in advance. Okay, we're going to season it. Got some pepper, some salt, we've got some mixed herbs. Back in with a whisk just quickly to get that combined. I'm decanting that into a more convenient container so it doesn't take up too much space in the fridge. Okay, so we cling film that, label it Yorkshire pudding for tomorrow and get that into the fridge and then we'll come back when this is ready. Hello guys, welcome back. Here we are, it's a day later. Our Yorkshire pudding batter has a day in the fridge. This is how to cook the Yorkshire puddings. We've got our muffin tray. And we've got some vegetable oil. Be careful what oil you choose. You need an oil that's going to be able to get up to a hot temperature. So no using expensive virgin olive oil for this. This is sunflower oil or vegetable oil. What we're doing, just a little dash 
in each one. And what you can do, this doesn't always work, but let's try it. You can overfill these top three. Then, if you're lucky, you can pour and you fill them. Look at that. Oh, beautiful. This is now going in the oven. Okay, the oil's lovely and hot. I'm taking the tray out, be careful here, we've got a tray full of hot oil. Keep the oven door closed. Give it a little stir and then get the batter in. And because the oil's hot, you can see the reactions having imme happening immediately. There we go, that's what we want to hear. I've actually turned this electric ring on, this is helping to keep the oil hot. If you have a gas, which is much nicer to cook on, sit it on the gas. Hotter the oil is, the better. Lovely. Back in the oven. Hot oven, 200 degrees, 10 minutes, beautiful Yorkshire puddings. Okay, 10 minutes have gone. I've had a look at them, they're looking beautiful, let's bring them out. So here we have our Yorkshire puddings. We can take these out, get them onto the cooling rack. This is going to allow them to cool down without producing any condensation and that means they're going to stay nice and crispy. Okay guys, we're going to make the horseradish sauce. You'll know this from a traditional English roast dinner. I want to lighten it up slightly. This is a buffet item. This is not a heavy main course. So what I'm going to do, I've got some double cream, I've got some parsley, pepper and salt and I've got my jar of horseradish. So first of all I'm going to take the double cream and I'm going to whisk this. Could use a machine but it's easy just getting on with it. See it's coming up. Okay, quite easy, wasn't it? Next, I'm going to chop the parsley. Just curly parsley, you could happily use flat leaf parsley. Make a little ball, this has been washed, picked and washed. Knife, nice and gently, it's not a hammer. Nice rolling action just to cut through the herbs without actually crushing them. Going with a pinch of pepper, pinch of salt, got a horseradish. Now the cream's already been whipped, be just gentle with it, don't try and whip it, otherwise it might over whip and then it'll split. Bring it together. Check the seasoning. I'm going to go for a little bit more salt. Clean spoon. Get that salt mixed in. And then get that into a bowl. Here's one I've already done. And then that's going in the fridge. Remember, double cream, so it needs to go in the fridge. Okay. Welcome back. We've made our Yorkshire puddings, we've made our horseradish cream, and now it's time to cook the beef. Got a nice piece of fillet here, fat end, it's going to be lovely and rare. This end's going to cook through, that gives your customers the choice of whether they want rare or cooked all the way through. Instead of pouring oil onto this, all I'm going to do, 
I've put a drop of oil in here and I'm now going to use this little silver tray to coat the oil and then going in a bit of salt a little bit of pepper and then we're ready to get over to the pan ok we're over the stove here I've got a pan that is uh, oven proof Remember we've already put a bit of oil onto the meat so we're going to use a minimum amount of oil here. The pan is nice and hot and in fact as you can see it's smoking. I'm going to bring it off, it's too hot that would burn and give the meat a horrible smell and a, a nasty burnt taste. So just bring it off, you're in control of this. It's very very difficult on electric to actually know what the temperatures are. That's cooled down enough now. I'm happy, we're going to get the beef in. Now leave it. There is a tendency to start shaking the pan and try and move it. Don't do that. Leave it. Allow the bottom to colour. Go beautiful crispy. And that will then release in its own time. There's no need to try and drag that meat out of the pan. Just leave it. If it's ready to release, it will release. Look at that already. Got a lovely colour. I'm going to go even deeper than that. And again, don't move it. Be patient. When it's ready to release, it will release. There it is, coming away beautifully. Let's have a look. Put it aside there. I want to get a bit of colour on. I'm actually going to come off for a moment. I'm concerned the oil might ignite, so I've just come off. Beautiful. Lovely. Let's get the end. Okay, so that's beautifully coloured now and it's going into a hot oven for about eight minutes. Okay guys, the beef's been in the oven for ten minutes. Let's get that out. Absolutely beautiful. I can feel on this side it's quite firm, so it's quite well cooked. This side's much softer and it's going to be lovely and uh, pink. So what I'm going to do now is transfer it onto a clean plate. I'm going to cover it with a little bit of tin foil and leave it for half an hour to rest. With a piece of meat like this, the juice will have rise to the top of the meat. If I carve it now, the juice will flood out and the meat will go dry. So after cooking a piece of meat like this, rest it for half an hour, let the juice sink back into the middle and then when you carve it, it'll be lovely and moist. See you in half an hour. Okay guys, the beef has now rested for half an hour. And that's allowed the juices to sink back into the meat. So this is going to be lovely and moist. We're going to carve it. In this country we use a yellow board for a cooked meat board. And then we're going to go in. Nice thin slices, this is a flavour, not really a main course. Remember this is for a buffet, people are going to get other pieces of food as well. I'm 
and it's getting pinker as we go this way as we talked about As you can see it's getting bigger and I'm going to cut that in half and we'll use half of that. Ok guys, we'll make some of these up. Ok guys, let's get this finished. The beef's still warm. We're going to start with the horseradish. Nice blob of horseradish, that acts as a glue. What I'm trying to do is just add a little twist to it. You don't want to lay the beef on flat because it looks a bit a little bit flat and you need a little bit of height to it, so just a little twist. We'll get this lot finished. If it's too big, feel free, trim a little bit off. That was a bit excessive for one. Job done. Yorkshire puddings, horseradish cream, rare fillet of beef.